if you're running Windows on your computer, you can actually download and try Linux on it without actually making any changes to Windows. We're going to go through the steps of downloading a version of Linux, which they are called distros or distributions. So we're going to download a Linux distro and we're going to test it and then we're going to install it if everything's okay. I'm going to use Linux Mint in this demonstration. However, you could also go to a site such as DistroWatch or just do a, a search on the internet for Linux distros. And if that doesn't confuse you enough, you could always just go to YouTube or such and type in Linux distros for noobs or something like that and you'll get plenty of information there. But as I say, we're going to use Linux Mint in this particular example. So here we are, we're at linuxmint.com and we go to the download and the latest version is Linux Mint 20.1. So we'll click on that. We scroll down a little bit. There's three versions you can download. There's Cinnamon, Mate or Matei as it's called and XFCE. They all basically look about the same. They pretty much do the same thing. It's just subtle differences and mainly to do with the power of your computer. So if you've got an older computer, you might prefer XFCE or the Matei edition. If your computer's only five years old or less, uh, even 10 years old, you'll be pretty right with Cinnamon. So we're gonna use Cinnamon for this example. So we'll click on that and it takes us to the download page. I'm in Australia, so I'll scroll down until I find somewhere in Australia to download it from. To hopefully get a bit better download speed. There's a couple there. We'll choose this one. We can see the files about 1.9 gigabytes. So most Linux distros will be about two gigabytes. So we'll click OK and we'll let that download. We will also need something to burn that onto a USB drive. We're going to use Etcher to burn that uh, file that we're downloading to a USB drive so that we can boot up off that USB drive and then we'll be able to test Linux and if we like it, if it works, we can actually install it from there. If you have a, a DVD drive, you could actually uh, burn the image to a DVD and do it that way. Unfortunately, you can't use a CD because the image is two gigabytes and it won't fit on a CD. The download's now complete. We're going to now uh, get Etcher. So you can see here it says download for Windows. So we'll click on that and save the file. And Etcher's now downloaded as well. We'll open up the file manager. And there's Linux Mint, which should be in our downloads. And there's Etcher, which is in there as well. So we'll double click on the Etcher file. We'll agree to the terms and conditions. Okay, we're going to flash from file. So we'll click on that, go to downloads, and there's the Linux Mint download. We'll open that. I'll plug the USB drive in and you'll see it'll turn up over here. There it, there it is there, USB stick E. And there's just some random folder on there. This is going to destroy all the data on the selected target. So you want to make sure that you get it right. So we can see USB, I just plugged it in and there it is, it's drive E. And I know that's the only folder on it there and there's nothing in it. So we'll go to select target and there it is there, USB flash drive, 16 gigabytes, drive E. So I'll select that. And now we press flash. That'll probably take a couple of minutes to uh, complete. 
just about finished flashing and now it's going to validate and we're now finished. So we can close Etcher. We have a look at the disk management utility and you can get to this by right clicking the start menu and going to disk management. We can see our C drive is about 120 gigabytes and after we boot up to Linux and test it, if we install it, we'll, we'll cut this in about half. So we're going to turn the C drive into about 60 odd gigabytes, give or take. At this point, if you're ready to test Linux out, you can actually close everything down on your computer and reboot. Sometimes when you first start your computer, you can see on the screen, those quite often they're just a black screen with the logo. It'll say press F12, F8, whatever the button might be to uh, bring up your boot menu. So you want to bring up that boot menu and then select that USB and hopefully you should boot up to the Linux desktop, which we'll be doing very shortly ourselves. So we're going to restart and boot into Linux. You see the option that I get is to press F12 to select the boot device, which would be the USB. This is the Linux boot menu. You can see the timer at the bottom. If you press the down arrow on your keyboard, it will stop the timer and you can make another selection. However, we're just going to let it boot up to the desktop. And here we are to the desktop of the live session of Linux. So we can tell it's a live session because it's got the install Linux Mint icon on it there, which we will be doing shortly. Uh, however, in your case, you probably want to just check, you know, open a few things up. Uh, you can open Firefox, you should be able to browse the web. Uh, if you've got a cable plugged in, you'll probably be connected straight away. Uh, otherwise, you'll probably want to connect your Wi-Fi. I'm plugged in with a cable here, so you can see we've got internet I'll just click on a link here and it should should be able to get there okay there we go this so we've got internet uh, if you've got Wi-Fi you'll probably want to come down here and connect your Wi-Fi up make sure all that works same with things like printers so once you're happy that you've got your hardware working and you're ready to give it a go which we're going to do now you can double click this icon and bring up the installer. So let's work our way through. Uh, English is good for me. English US keyboard works for me. You can actually test test your keyboard down there. So we're going to continue. Thoroughly recommend installing the codex here. So we'll continue. This computer currently has Windows 10 on it. What would you like to do? So it's detected Windows 10 and it's defaulting to install Linux Mint alongside Windows 10, which is this top option here. There's other options there, but this is what we're doing in this demonstration. So we're going to leave that as it is and we're going to continue. And here we go, It's this is representing the hard drive so here's Windows we can see it's showing 73 gigabytes for Windows and about 54 for Linux we can put the mouse up between and we can move them back and forward a little bit so it's going to depend on how big your drive is and how much data you've got on it but as I said in the beginning of the video we'd go for about 60 gigs either way so there's 61 We'll give Windows a little bit more, we'll give 60 to Linux. If you try to go too far, you can see it stops at 23. So Windows is obviously using about 23 gigabytes there. And same if we go too far the other way, it's going to stop you at about 12 gigs. So you probably want at least 20 gigabytes uh, for, for Linux. If you just want to test Linux out, you're going to want about 20, 20 odd gigabytes. But in this case, we're going to go out to about We'll do it 50. So we've got nearly 80 for Windows and about 50 for Linux. At this point, uh, this will be the point of no return. We could still cancel now, shut down, 
the computer and pull the USB stick out and everything's unchanged but once we start clicking the next couple of buttons it's going to make irreversible changes so this is the point of no return here it's now going to start making changes to the disk so we're going to continue I trust you've done all your backing up and everything else you've done enough uh, research into what you're doing you're comfortable with what you're doing but most of the time that I've done this I haven't had too many problems you will get the occasional one so it's not not unheard of but it's usually pretty uh, straightforward so there we go it's it's writing changes to the disk and that's it we've already made changes now to the disk so we're going to continue forward Melbourne's pretty close to where I am you can actually click on the interactive map or you can type your city name down the bottom we'll continue enter your name and a, a name for the computer I'm just going to call it Minty1 that'll be the username there which is always in lower case I'll type in a password and type it again and we're just taking all the defaults here so we're going to require a password to log in and we're going to continue depending on the speed of your computer this should only take five or ten minutes we're finished installing so we'll restart you can remove the USB stick press enter now I've got a boot menu so Linux Mint's at the top and there's Windows at the bottom and in the middle is advanced options for Linux Mint the up and down arrows on your keyboard navigate between them and to stop the timer if you just hit the down arrow or the up arrow that will stop the timer if you want to take more time to consider your choice we'll boot into Linux Mint by pressing enter type your password and press enter again and we're greeted by the welcome screen so there we go you'll notice we don't have the uh, install Linux Mint icon now because it's now installed we'll start the file manager and we can see here under devices that was saying I think 128 gigabytes earlier on and now it's 78 so that'll be Windows and indeed we can see there's Windows documents and settings and so forth and this is us on our Linux system here we'll boot into Windows use the down arrow to get to Windows 10 and we press enter and Windows has probably realized that uh, somebody stole half of its C drive uh, if you get this you're just gonna have to let it go go through and do what it's got to do Okay, the machine's restarted, so we'll go down to Windows 10 again and see what happens. And it only took the computer a couple of moments to check for errors, it didn't take that long, and then it restarted. And here we are up to the Windows desktop. So let's log in here and have a look. If we right click the Start menu button and go up to Disk Management, So here's our C drive you might remember from earlier that it was about 120 gigabytes and it's now 72 and this is Linux over here 
and be aware that Windows cannot actually read a Linux file system, uh, not without some uh, help with some extra tools that Windows doesn't have natively. So there's Linux over there, 46 gigabytes, and this is Windows here. I'll get back into Linux. I recommend going through the welcome screen. We've got some menus down the side here. It'll give you a bit of a uh, heads up where to start. Some documentation, where to get help and so forth. The shield down near the clock with the tan dot is the update manager. So if we click on that, we hit OK. It's going to ask us to switch to a local mirror. So we'll say yes. Put in your password. And then we just click here. And whichever one's the fastest will usually rise to the top. So we'll click that one and we hit apply. And then we click on this lower panel. And probably one of those will be the quickest ones there that I normally get from my location. So this one up here looks like it's the quickest. So you can sit and let it go all, all through them, but I know from here that that's usually the quickest. So I'll just take that, apply, and then we hit OK. And that just means that our updates are coming from somewhere a little bit closer to us and that not everybody's hitting the same server uh, somewhere in the world. It's uh, distributed amongst a whole heap of different what they call mirrors. That's all finished. We can close out of there. Go back to the update manager. We hit apply the update to enter your password again. And now it's probably going to find a whole heap of updates. And there they are, there's 358 megabytes worth of updates. And all we need to do is hit install updates. And there's some extras there, so we'll say OK to those. Put in your password, and you're good to go. So that'll take a few minutes. Once that's done, you're, you're pretty much uh, up to speed with your new fresh install of Linux Mint dual booting alongside Windows 10.